Foxtrot, this is the wizard. Do you read me, sitting duck? This is Peking Duck. I hear you, Blizzard. No, Sly, I'm the wizard, and you're sitting duck. I read you loud and clear, Lizard. No, I, I'm... Forget it, you're not taking this seriously. Yeah, I'm not. Look, Bentley, I know this is your first time out in the field, but you've got to loosen up. If we're going to get to those clockwork parts, I need you on your toes. So in plain talk, what's your status? Well, I've established myself in the basement, and I'm pretty sure I can rewire the service elevator if you can power it up from that security station. Hang tough, pal. It might take some time, but I'll figure out a way to get up there. All in all, I think that break-in went in pretty well. Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome to Sly 2 Band of Thieves, a sequel to a game that series that I started well over nine years ago at this point. And after playing through the entire series over the past year and a half, I felt like it was time for me to finally revisit the series on the main channel. So yeah, we're doing Slide 2 tonight. I'm actually playing the remake version that's on the PS3 because it looks a lot better than the PS2 version, although there are some glaring issues with this version that I really don't like, and I'll get into it as we get into the series more. However, it's still a pretty good uh, HD remake. It looks really nice and such. Slide looks pretty good. It controls pretty well. And yeah, it's just a really fun game. It's also a lot different from the first game if you've never played any of the other Sly games in the series outside the first one. I'll get more into that as we continue on through the game as well, but for now, let's just hop up here onto this, what I'm gonna guess is a whale skeleton? Yeah, this looks like a whale skeleton. Gonna make our way over here, hop onto his tail, and go give Bentley a little bit of uh, help. Good luck with that, Bentley. I'll just stay here and admire the work. I'll admire this art piece over here because this is a very familiar looking figure. The spotlights are offline. What do we got over here? Oh, that's a very nice looking town. There goes the laser security system. I'm working on the security gate. Ah, art. Modern art. Actually, on, is that what I think it is? I think it is. Presto, all clear. Thanks, pal. For your first time out, you did pretty well. Oh, this operation is far from complete. Now that the lasers and spotlights are offline, Murray should be moving into position for your rendezvous. I'll stay here and provide computer support while you go on ahead. All right, we will do just that. Now, before we go, there's one thing we need to do, which is a staple of the Sly series. Property damage, because we need to get a lot of money. Money in this game functions a lot differently than it did in the first game, whereas the first game, every time you picked up 100 coins, you would get an extra life. This game doesn't run on a life system, thank you. However, money does actually have a true value and true purpose in this game. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go around here, break all these priceless artifacts, because, you know, a Master Thief would not just steal all these artifacts for the money. No, they break the money right out of, out of them. It's a more efficient way to get uh, paid, to be honest. Now, what we need to do is get around 300 coins. I don't think it's possible to get 300 coins in this prologue, but it is actually, uh, I think you can get like around 200, 250 coins. I also got a bunch of security guards over here. They are completely worthless because they patrol in areas that you can't ever get to. Also, they don't even carry a weapon, so I don't know what they were gonna do even if they caught us. Just head down here as we see Many, many pictures of the game's past. I don't know why uh, this museum right here holds concept art of the famous trio of thieves. We got Sly, we got Murray, we got Bentley right here. I think this is like an early concept art for them. No, oh, Bentley's going to keep them off our backs for a while. Uh, we got Raleigh up here. This is just basically a big museum of memories. It's just, oh, hey, here's concept art from this game, the first game, Sly in general. Here's some things from uh, the past Fiendish 5. Here we have even like a very, very early concept of Sly where his cane looks like it would be more of a walking cane than a, a thief cane. And what I'm going to guess, I'm going to say that was probably, given that the fact there's a skull on that fence post right there, that was probably like an early concept level for Hey. 
And we got mug shot right here. Once wearing a very nifty hat. Unfortunately, it got cut out. I kind of wish I had a, a version of that where he did have a hat. There's Raleigh again. Back there's Miss Ruby. But there is actually something here that is actually a worth a lot more to look at. It's not this. It's not the the Van Gogh or the the, the Mo. I was go about to say the Mozart. No, that's he's not an artist. Uh, what we want to go and look at is right over here in this corner. This right here, JoJo's uh, World Army. This is a concept art, or I guess more of an Easter egg to Sucker Punch's very first game ever, which was Rocket Robot on Wheels for the N64. A game that I actually really highly recommend. It's a really fun game. It is basically, these are characters from the game, and it's a nice little recognition. This game actually has a lot of recognition for Rocket, and it feels like Sucker Punch really wanted to try to do another Rocket game at some point. But then again, the other Easter eggs that you find for Rocket in this series might say that, hey, we're not going to even try to do a Rocket game ever again. Which is sad. Rocket was a really fun game. Let's just head up here, do some more collateral damage, and waste those money. No problem. I'll just take the long way around. If memory serves, you need to jump and hit the circle button to run along ropes. Ah, the staple of the Sly series, aside from breaking things, smacking things, sneaking around, and getting paid, is jumping and hitting the circle button. You basically do everything by jumping and hitting the circle button. You even have to beat the game by jumping and hitting the circle button. So for now, we're just going to run along these ropes. Hopefully not mess up people's laundry as we go through here. Although I will scare these birds because it's fun. Smack these birds out of the way. Show them who's boss. And as we make our way over here. Do a little bit more property damage. I could have sworn we could break this snake statue right here. But I think it's not until like a later part of the game. Alright, first thing to note, unlike the last table and chairs and such, you want to break everything in here real quick. Because you might be able to hear heavy breathing, because here comes Murray. He's the brawn. Greetings, citizen. I hope you weren't harmed by my meteoropic entrance. No, Murray, I, I kept at a safe distance. Good, good. The Thunderflop knows neither friend nor foe, only destruction. Yeah, could you maybe channel some of that raw energy into the security gate? Of course. It is nothing before the Murray. I'm sorry, it's not Murray who came thundering in. It was the Murray, as he calls himself throughout the series now. I love Murray. I love Bentley and I love Sly, but Murray's still the best character out of all of them. He, he's just so humble. He's like the textbook definition of a best friend. Although, technically, these three are all best friends, and the friendship really does show throughout the series. It even gets stronger as the series goes on. Uh, can I actually? Yeah, I can. Just so I don't get too close to that rope. Never mind. No, my coins! Another barrier stands before you. Fear not. I shall bend it like the truth. It's a good thing those guards didn't hear that crashing sound. My hulking frame is too much for that puny rope. You go ahead and unlock the doors from the inside. I'll be waiting in the hallway to help you carry out the clockwork parts. Uh, Murray, uh, there seems to be a little bit of a flaw in your plan. How are you going to get through the garden? Because I don't see a connecting point from where we are to where that is aside from this rope. Even then, he'd have to go back through that way to get to that part of the museum, but even then, there's no way to get through it. Well, either way, good luck, Murray. Uh, can I please? Yeah, there we go. Let's just hop up here, run across this tightrope. And I think this is the last place we can get some money for a bit. Cooper. Inspector Fox, 
As beautiful and unpredictable as ever. Whereas you crooks are so predictable. You always return to the scene of the crime. Crime? I haven't stolen anything. Yet. Oh, really? Then who broke in last night and made off with all the clockwork parts? You've got the motive. Someone already stole the parts? Don't play dumb with me. It might not have been him, Kamnita. The method of entry and guard casualties all point to this being a claw gang job. The claw gang? Constable Neela, I allowed you to sit in on this stakeout as a favor to the Contessa. I really don't need any help. Oh, I think you might. Look at the facts. Facts? Sly Cooper is right here. I caught him red-handed. I'm just saying that there are other criminals in the world other than... Sly Cooper! I like that he just sneaks out while they're arguing. Alright, time for another staple of the Sly series. Run away while Carmelita can't hit shit. Well, actually, no, she can hit everything except the person she's trying to hit. I think we can break stuff and just completely just mess with Carmelita even more by just breaking stuff and getting money. While she inevitably keeps trying to hit us and, as per usual, can't even hit the broadside of a barn. It's gonna cause a little bit more property damage. Oh, she actually hit, managed to hit Bentley there. Well, still her main target is like Murray, please. Fuck up. Let's keep breaking stuff. This is actually a nice little like uh, sneak peek as to some of the later levels in this. Although there's also like some callbacks to earlier levels. But then again, it could also just be reused assets. But eh, it, it kind of fits still. I like to think this is like a sneak peek to some of the later levels coming up in the game. Oh, she actually managed to hit Murray. Congratulations, Carmelita. You hit the two people that you weren't technically supposed to be aiming for. All right, come on, guys. Let's go. This is getting a little hot. You guys go warm up the van. I'll keep Carmelita busy. You're all going to jail. Pick me up at the rendezvous. Yeah. Oh, that's a terrible police perimeter. What are you trying to do? Box in that fountain? I mean, look, there, the gang just got away. Although, they were pretty quick when it came to turn around. Okay, so th for this part, it's actually really important to destroy these things before Carmelita does. Because if she hits them, you don't get coins. However, if you break them, especially the TV antennas, you get a lot of coins out of it. I think she's always guaranteed to hit at least one thing, but you definitely want to prioritize hitting those t TV antennas. Okay, for the most part. There's usually like one in five things there that will give you a lot of coins outside of the other things that only give you like two to three. Smash this, smash that, that gives me nothing, so it's completely worthless. Wow, she actually managed to hit me. I should feel absolutely ashamed of myself for actually letting her hit me. Wow, I'm doing abysmal. All right, you know what? I'm taking the expressway down. Thanks for the cover, guys. All right, let's get out of here. Carmelita's just as angry as ever. She's really quite lovely when she's angry. And that constable, Neela, was a reference to the claw gang just a slip of the tongue or an intentional clue? Either way, it's her only lead on the missing clockwork parts. Clockwork. He was consumed with jealousy for the Cooper clan's thieving reputation. Is it inappropriate to refer to him as a monster? No, not at all. What kind of person stays alive for hundreds of years with the express intention of wiping out a rival's family line? Imagine the hatred fueling that first decision to replace his mortal body with soulless machinery. Ultimately, it did the trick. Clockwork lived on. He caught up with my parents, and I wound up in an orphanage. It's there that I met my pals, Bentley, the brains of our outfit, and Murray the brawn. They turned out to be all the family I needed. Two years ago, I thought I'd finished it. How naive to think I could so easily put an end to that kind of hatred. And now he's back, 
In pieces, sure, but the threat is real. Does the Claw Gang even realize what they've stolen? I don't know what's in my future, but I won't let it be a repeat of my past.